Hey, Slingers, welcome back to another week of the Word Slinger podcast. Now, can changing your routine change and improve your work? We're going to take a look at that and more coming up next. Hey, how you doing on money? I know that's a touchy subject, but uh, I got something that may help you out. See, I'm using an app called Acorns. and It helps me manage some investing, uh, put some money back, get a little interest, It's kind of nice to watch my money grow. So I want to share that with you. Go to kevintumlinson.com slash acorns and you'll get some free money. See you there. It's the Word Slinger Podcast, where story matters. Build your brand. Write your book. Redefine who you are. It's all about the story here. What's yours now? Here's the guy who invented pants optional, Kevin Tumlinson, the word slinger. Word slinger. Well, I am Kevin Tumlinson, the word slinger, and uh, I am uh, I'm really interested in this topic, <laughs> which is why uh, instead of uh, dilly dallying around like I normally do, I'm jumping right into it because here's the deal: I am uh, right now changing. A lot of my routines to accommodate a new, a couple of new ideas uh, that are that are sort of taking hold in my life and in my career. So, among those, um, now you, you may have heard me talk about this before. I've mentioned this on other podcasts, uh, but come April, my wife Kara and I are uh, we're basically what's happening is our lease is up on this apartment we've been renting since we came off the road. Uh, a few years ago, uh, well, we've moved uh, at least once, but, um, we came off the road a couple of years ago, uh, after living in our, RV, in our RV for a couple of years. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, there are, <laughs> there's a backstory there. Uh, but the deal was we, we miss it. We miss being in the RV. Uh, we don't miss particularly that RV, um, Maybe it's just bad associations, but there were some issues in that. Uh, but one one of the things that uh, came out of that whole experience was we did discover uh, sort of what we like, what we don't like. Uh, we we sort of worked out a few of the uh, misconceptions that we had about RV life, uh, and uh, we decided, you know, we we kind of want to do this again. We want to try this again, so we're we're gonna get a smaller RV. We're keeping the big one. We're renting that out to um, to some people, to people uh, through a service in uh, that's located in Florida. But I've since discovered that RV is <laughs> it could be anywhere right now. Last time I heard about it, it was in like Elkhart, Indiana. Um, <clears throat> but we're getting a small camper. We're going to downsize to something very small. We're going to live in that full time, and uh, and we're we're really excited about the whole thing but here's where things get a little different um so last time we did this Kara and I both had started new careers or new jobs um extensions of our careers with employers um so Kara had started with Office Depot uh, corporate and uh I had started with uh draft to digital and uh you know back then uh we it basically Kara's work locked us in place uh but that's changing uh she's able to work remotely a, a lot more now and uh we're you know we've got some plans in motion uh so we're we're kind of changing we're going to change our plan that whole thing had brought us off the road essentially uh the last time it it, it got us uh uh, to have basically forced us to be stationary. <laughs> so, and uh, we, it hasn't been bad. We've really enjoyed where we are. Uh, this apartment in particular has been very nice. It's a, you know, a very spacious uh, apartment, three bedrooms. Uh, Kara and I both get an office that way. And, you know, we're spread out. But we've also, this is something, uh, this is kind of a minimalist uh, approach to things. But, um, I feel like I'm owned by my stuff sometimes, you know, I'm kind of bogged down by the amount, the volume of things, uh, that I have in my life. And I feel like that has been a limitation in exploring, uh, the world because of all these things. 
I have overhead. The overhead makes it so that I have to, uh, uh, you know, spend X amount of time uh, working and uh, not really getting to get out and enjoy the world. Now, I, I'm a lot, my schedule is a lot l more loose than most people's. Um, looser, I guess, is the better way to say that. I have, a, I have more freedom and flexibility than most people, I realize. Um, and I do, I travel quite a bit, but Kara hasn't been able to tr do that with me so far. Um, but if we can set this up, it no, not if we can, when we set this up, when we get going on this, it means, uh, detaching ourselves. It means, you know, untethering ourselves and moving around in the world. This was not meant to be a whole RV lifestyle kind of discussion, but, uh, I think, I think it's probably interesting. I think it may be interesting to a lot of you. You know, uh, I know not everyone thinks of this in romantic terms, but, um, the idea of being able to change your scenery anytime you want. Uh, the world is your front yard. You know, uh, the world is your playground. The world is your gym. I mean, it's just, it's always been very exciting to me. And I know that it is enticing to others. Um, and it's just recently that Kara and I came to discover <laughs> just how easy it would be to, um, to actually do this, to actually step out and, uh, you know, disconnect from, uh, from the tether <laughs> and get moving out in the world. Um, so here we are. So now all that said, what it's doing is forcing me to reevaluate what I need and how I do what I do. And that is creating a lot of interesting side effects. Uh, so one of the things that I decided to do was take a, take another strong look at my iPad pro. Um, I recently went ahead and got into the beta for the for iPad OS, which is the new version of iOS for iPad, specifically for iPad, and it comes with a lot of great features that make it much more computer-like. Um, it has its limitations, um, but so did my so did my MacBook Pro and my MacBook Air. I mean, they, you know, even the the Mac Mini that I was using as a sort of desktop machine, you know, each presents its own limitations and I was constantly having to figure out how to work around those limitations. So this isn't really any different for me, um, but it does offer sort of a fresh perspective, a new way to look at how I do my work. <clears throat> One of those things, by the way, is uh, right this second, for the first time ever, I'm recording a podcast on the iPad. So we're going to see how this works. I'm going to see how this shapes up. I'm going to try to produce the show entirely on the iPad. Now, I'm cheating a little because I've got a, I've got assets on my laptop that I haven't yet moved over to the iPad. Um, and I'm going, to, I'm going to do that today. That's the cheating part. I'm going to use the laptop <laughs> to move files, basically, uh, just because they're there and it's easier. Um, but the, the goal, uh, the eventual goal is... Uh, I just pop in and uh, connect my microphone to the iPad and I do the show, do the whole show. And I think that's going to work out just fine. Um, I've already discovered a couple of little limitations that are somewhat annoying, but I bet I get around it. <laughs> so I bet I figure it out. Um, anyway, so that's doing the podcast on the iPad. That's uh, kind of forcing me to reevaluate how I do things, my workflow, uh, you know, I have a, I have, um, I'm sort of famous for my workflow, uh, in some circles anyway. I, I, I have a whole, you know, process for writing and for producing shows and for doing all the things that I do. So changing that is always painful, always. Um, but what I've discovered is the pain is completely worth it. Um, because as I change my routines and change my process, I learn new things. I encounter new resources. Um, I start figuring out alternatives and, uh, I start to refine a whole new process. And uh, most of the time that ends up being, uh, it ends up spiking my efficiency and I'm able to do more with less stress. And that my friends is the goal. <laughs> do more with less stress and, uh, enjoy my life more. So, uh, okay. <clears throat> now how this relates to writing. So I started writing in, exclusively on the iPad now. Um, 
It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, so what happened was I went on a trip to Oklahoma City <clears throat> for uh, Oklahoma City Christian Writers. Um, I'm going to be back in Oklahoma City starting tomorrow, Thursday. Um, so we'll see how this shapes up. Uh, but what I did this last time was I took my laptop, but I also took my iPad. And while I was there, I only worked from the iPad. So everything I did that week, um, including the presentation I gave at, at the uh, Christian Writers thing, was done from the iPad. And it actually was much, much better, a much better experience than trying to do things with the laptop, believe it or not. I mean, it was just simpler. Um, everything was just much, much more streamlined. There were caveats to how I had to do things, uh, but it's, it's, you know, I'm, work, I'm working out the best way uh, to approach some of these things like alternatives and what I mean by that. Okay. For example, um, I use Grammarly to help me edit my work. The, uh, there is no Grammarly app on the iPad. However, uh, since iPad OS came along and it's in beta now, but it'll be, um, they're talking about the full release soon. (laughs) fall 2019, which is where we are right now. Um, since that came along, they included an update to, uh, iPad Safari. And though I don't typically like to use Safari as my browser, what it, one of the things that it does is present you with the full desktop version of websites. And because it does that, I am able to use Grammarly, the full version of Grammarly for my work. Um, so uh, that's the workaround I came up with. Now, the problem is uh, Scrivener for iPad. So far, I haven't found a way to export my chapters as Word documents individually yet. Now, that doesn't mean it can't do it. It just means I haven't found it yet. Uh, so that, I'm looking into that now. So this is what I'm talking about. There are little challenges that come up, and i got to solve them. Uh, that happens to be one of my favorite things in the world. It's that whole figure it out uh, philosophy, the FIO philosophy that we, we talked about in, uh, in episode, uh, 194, um, figure it out. And that's what I'm doing. I'm figuring it out. I I have, I have Scrivener. This is, it's interesting. We were watching an episode. We've been, we like to rewatch old shows. Um, that's how Kara and I like to unwind in the evenings. And, uh, right now we're watching Stargate SG one, which is one of my favorite shows of all time. Um, but there was an episode in which uh, and it, the title involves the word Tantalus, and I can't remember the full title of that episode. But uh, the SG-1 crew is stranded on a planet with this guy who uh, went through the gate in the 40s, and uh, the, uh, the, star, the dial home device has been damaged, and so they have no way to power up and dial the gate to get home. All right, so Jack says, Colonel Jack O'Neill says... You know, basic survival 101. We know what we have. Now, what do we need? And I, I realized, you know, that's and that is essentially how I operate daily. You know, uh, that's how I approach everything. I know what I have. What do I need? I know what I need to accomplish, and I know what I have. What do I need to do, or procure, <laughs> or modify in order to get to uh, my goal? Um, if you operate this way, it can, it it is a life changing way to live your life. And as a writer, I think it's particularly useful. So I'm using, uh, Scrivener for uh, iPad, Scrivener for iOS. Now I talk about writing on my phone and things like that. And I still do all that. Um, I I think that that is, uh, the the mobile version of Scrivener is perhaps my favorite writing tool of all time. Out, outpacing to me even the uh, full-on Scrivener application on the desktop. I think this is the crowning achievement of word processing tools, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, and your your mileage may vary, but I think it, for the price, I mean, it's like 20 bucks to get the Scrivener app. Uh, the power that this thing has, the ability to, to you know move files around, uh, scenes and chapters around, reorganize the story. I mean, I use this stuff every day. <laughs> I mean, it's just, these features are incredible. Um, but even if I was just using Google Docs or Word or 
pages, you know, Apple pages, um, the experience of writing on the iPad to me has been a much better experience than I've, than I've had on a device in years, including when I originally had an iPad, you know, the iPad one and tried writing on that. It's, it's, it's been improved dramatically. Um, but it does come with its challenges. It comes with uh, a couple of things that you just have to work out. So, um, this is where things get fun because as I'm looking at how to accomplish the things I need to accomplish. So I know my current workflow, you know, I know that I, you know, on a desktop or a laptop, I open up Scrivener, I do the work, I spit that out as a uh, word document. I take that into the Grammarly app. I, uh, edit and correct. I bring it back into Scrivener. You can do a lot of this stuff directly in a word processor. Now, um, Grammarly has a word plugin. If you're on the windows, uh, operating system and Grammarly has a, uh, Google docs, uh, plugin, no matter what operating system you're on, <clears throat> except that it doesn't work on mobile right now. <laughs> but the, the point of all this is, um, you, whatever your workflow is, I mean, you, you can, you know how you like to work, you know what you like to accomplish. So when you make a change though, what it does is force you to rethink it. I know that I usually do this, this, and this, but uh, I have to change. Um, the, something is glitching out, uh, it's not working properly, or I, I need to downsize, or I need a better system, or whatever, uh, or I just want to be more efficient. So you make a change, and then you have to figure out how to get the same results, because the result is what matters here, right? Uh, what I've been doing on the iPad that's been helpful is uh, going on YouTube and finding videos of people doing what I'm trying to do. And you wouldn't believe the num the amount of software I've found through this, uh, the apps that I've found, some very pro-level stuff. Um, I estimate now, I used to say I do I can do about 80% of my work on the iPad. I think it's more in the high 90s now. It's probably like 98, 99%. The one thing I seem to be missing at the moment um is a vellum replacement. <laughs> uh, but then again, I have draft to digital and I can actually go into D to D and do my layout and everything through that. So, uh, I'm not without a layout tool. I just, I really liked how vellum worked. So, um, for the time being, I keep a laptop around at least to do vellum, but I think that'll change too. And I don't mind. I like, I love draft to digital's, uh, templates, you know, so they're fine. They work great. They just, you know, I, I guess I'm looking for a little more fine control over it than what we're so far. We're able to give authors, uh, in the browser based layout tool that we have. Um, but you do get quite a bit of control through that. So it really, honestly, I mean, it's just me being picky <laughs> and overly picky at that. Um, if I needed to, if I wanted, if I, if, if I just didn't have vellum as an option at all, I'd already be using draft to digital full time for that. And a lot of authors do, and they love it and works fantastic. So really I can do a hundred percent of my work. It's just what, uh, you know, <laughs> I can do a hundred percent of my work, but what, where do I want to compromise? And compromise is the key to this game. Um, Whoever, you know, these people who say live life without compromise, um, I don't think they're living life at all, frankly. <laughs> How do you live life without compromise? Compromise is life. That's what life is. You go out, you encounter the world, your, your ego crashes against reality, and you have to figure out how to get to where you want, despite the fact that the world isn't necessarily going to cooperate with you. You have to compromise to succeed. That's my, that's my philosophy. You have to <clears throat> be willing to put in the work, make the changes. One second. You can hear my voice kind of going there. Um, make the changes, make, you know, make adjustments, figure out a new way, figure out a new plan, figure it out. FIO. <laughs> this, this podcast is brought to you by FIO. Uh, but that's, that's the reality of how you succeed. Honestly, now maybe none of this appeals to you, 
Uh, but there can be some huge advantages just to spending a little time changing the way you do things, asking yourself if there's a better way. Um, you can always keep your old process in reserve. You don't have to give up on it. But you might look just look at replacing one small piece of it. So uh, a while back, I started making some changes to the way I did um, produced this show, for example. This show is the most the, is the most on my mind, so we'll we'll take a look at that. But I, the same thing applies to my writing. Actually, let's just look at the writing. I, I changed I've changed the way I my process for my writing several times over the course of my career. Uh, you know, I started writing in Word, uh, for example, wrote all my books in Word, uh, did my formatting in Word because <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to mess with formatting tools at that point. Uh, this was early days, okay? And, uh, you know, I designed my covers in Photoshop still, uh, but uh, even that process has changed with time. Basically, what happens is I do things for a while, and then I start looking at how can I make this better, and I start Googling things, you know, getting on YouTube and looking, seeing how other people are doing it, and then stealing their ideas, <laughs> retooling. Uh, and that has allowed me to improve my process and refine it and make things easier. And that has made it quicker and uh, easier to produce the books at a rapid rate. Um, and even if you're not looking to be prolific and produce book after book, uh, taking a second look at your process can help you, can help take some of the harder work out of writing in general. Um, I saw... I forget who it was. One of the one of the authors, breakout authors, um, on uh, on Twitter. <laughs> he was writing about how hard writing is and how it should be hard, etc. Um, you know, he was lamenting about. Oh, it was uh, Ch I can't remember. Uh, he was lamenting about the uh, comment that. Um, you know, find some, do something you love and you never work a day in your life. And he just thought this was an asinine kind of thing. And I, I kind of get where he's coming from. Um, but the, he kind of misses the point because the point of that aphorism is if you're doing work you love, then it, it, if you're working your passion, in other words, then it doesn't feel like work, Right. But the way that you keep that feeling, <laughs> the way you keep that passion going, is that uh, we are creatures who love novelty. So start looking at ways to do the work in a novel way, in a new way, um, and improve. You know, that's really the keys to success. One of them is to always look at how you can improve what you're doing. That's that's how you... Uh, that's how this just, you know, continues to grow. Look at all the resources you have, all the ways in which you're doing things. And I'm sorry I'm getting a, a million alerts at the same time right now, <laughs> which I find annoying. Uh, but look, look at the way you do things and, and decide, can I, can I tweak things? Can I change things? You know, can I make a... Um, create a new process and make a new way and that will open up new doors of of joy you know a new passion for the work um i can't tell you how many times i've i've heard people say you know i got into a rut with my writing or i got into a rut with my my uh, artwork or just my job in general and then one day i decided you know i'm just going to do a little something different um Somebody decides that, you know, they're, they're an artist and they're going to stop painting in a traditional way and start using, you know, homemade paint. <laughs> they're going to learn how to make their own pigments. Uh, there are, uh, a writer stops writing using his laptop and starts writing by longhand. Or um, someone uh, working uh, in the film and television industry decides they're going to change the platform they shoot on. Uh, and they're going to go to shooting on film instead of digital. And this opens up this whole new world for them to explore. And that is a major key to success in any field. O open yourself up to exploring a whole new world. 
open yourself up to trying all new things. Do one little thing at a time, but you would be amazed at how much that improves your passion for what you're doing, your energy, uh, but also can improve the efficiency of what you're doing. It can help you streamline the way you do it, which means that you can produce more or produce better, uh, finish the work that you've started with you know less less drudgery, <laughs> less dragging it out of yourself, and more enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is the elixir of life. Enthusiasm will lead to you being forever young uh, and <laughs> to you being forever passionate. Uh, enthusiasm just really is the key to a better, more fulfilling life. So, And the way you get enthusiasm is you seek out novelty and you seek out uh, learning and growing. And uh, you study, you just immerse yourself into uh, this thing that you that you love find find a new way the whole you know that's a that's a aspect of the figure it out method too so anyway um i'm at 25 minutes on this uh so i that means i'm probably at 30 minutes total so i'm just gonna go ahead and wrap us up and uh i hope that this made sense and it was coherent um i've had a lot of little disruptions and things happening while i was recording so sorry for getting off track here and there but uh, I do hope that you got something useful for your career and life out of this, and uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll explore this further and as t- as things go by. So, <laughs> take care of yourself out there. Uh, God bless you. I'm I'm really glad that you're here. I'm I'm blessed by you being here. Uh, got a lot of big things coming up. If you haven't already, go over to wordslingerpodcast.com slash podcast right now. That's the temporary work around i had a glitch i haven't been able to fix yet but wordslingerpodcast.com slash podcast and uh, on the right hand side is a um there's a little bar a little uh, there's you'll see three columns on the page and on the uh right hand column if you scroll down just a little you'll see uh, be a slinger join the mailing list get on that mailing list i'm starting to do a few things I'm going to start rolling out, uh, we're going to do a webinar here soon. I'm thinking about creating a, an author course. I'm thinking about doing some author coaching, a whole lot of stuff. And uh, just, I, I, I hate uh, these things that just sort of take advantage of authors and just overcharge and constantly trying to get them for money. Uh, so I, what I've been committing to is uh, I'm, I'm going to charge for certain things, uh, but I'm going to try to keep the, the rates low. Um, so that they're, they're attainable and accessible. Um, cause I got to compensate for the investment on my part, <laughs> including personnel in some cases, uh, and other resources that I have to use to make this happen. Um, but also, you know, I do want to make a little bit of a profit, never be ashamed to make some profit, <laughs> but I, but don't try to screw people out of money. That's my motto. Um, just make sure you're giving more than you're being compensated for just put it that way that's what i'm gonna try to do uh so get over to uh wordslingerpodcast.com slash podcast look i think actually i've got this set up a little mailing list uh thing on every episode as well uh but it's definitely on the right hand column of that page and it's just your name and email and you click a little box that says marketing permission uh has a little blurb after that and click submit and you're on the list and once you're on the list uh, I will periodically email you with, you know, updates. Uh, sometimes I've been trying to send out n- alerts about the uh, latest episodes each week. And uh, I'm going to send some stuff out about webinars. Um, not just webinars I'm doing, but also draft to digital webinars. So if you're not on the draft to digital list, this is a good way to find out about those too. Um, and all kinds of stuff. So we're going to grow that. I mean, I've, I, I kind of brushed off a a uh, cold list and I've it's been interesting to see what's happened as I've tried to warm that up some people are like where did you get my email address um like well you signed up for this thing <laughs> so and some people are adamant that they did not so it's been pretty interesting so I'll talk about that in a future episode so uh anyway god bless you I hope you're having a wonderful week uh if you are in Oklahoma City this week I am going to be at the uh, WriterCon uh, starting Friday. 
Uh, we're going to do a draft to digital. Speaking of webinars, we're going to do a webinar uh, um, and ask us anything on Thursday. That's tomorrow, my time, at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. Uh, we're actually, it's me, Dan Wood, and Mark Lefebvre talking to you from the Oklahoma City offices of draft to digital uh, all together for the first time on, uh, on a broadcast. Um, not for the first time in person, uh, but the first time on a broadcast together, and uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting look at some of, uh, we've done several of these now, but we're going to take a look at library distribution and a couple other things, so make sure you, you hop over and check that out. You can find that um, on Facebook, if you go to the draft to digital page on Facebook, you'll find the event for that, and uh and sign up you can RSVP so and if you're if you uh, miss that somehow just uh, reach out to me um, go to wordslingerpodcast.com hit the contact button and you can email me I'll give you some details so hope you have a wonderful weekend uh, safe and uh, happy and some productive writing God bless you and I'll see you all next time Slinger.